Hello, everybody, and welcome to Explore Classroom. My name is Jennifer Bergen. I'm a teacher and a National Geographic Explorer. I am so glad that you are joining us today. Many of our viewers are preparing for Yom Kippur this Wednesday, and all of us at National Geographic wish you a Yom Tov. And for those of you who are old enough, we hope you have an easy fast. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Explorer Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and time for your questions. And this school year, each month will be organized around a specific theme. This October, Explorer Classroom will be exploring the importance of water conservation. Today, our explorer is Jens Bonner. Jens comes from Chile, a country in South America. He loves to steer a kayak while working as an anthropologist. This means he studies how people live in the past and today. So why would Jens use a kayak to do his work and study people? Well, the reason is that Jens loves to study how people interact with rivers. He would walk out of his house when he was really little and go to one of the favorite places in the world, the Bio Bio River. And so he's loved this river since he was young, like many of our viewers. This is where he eventually learned how to whitewater kayak and how to study the people around him. Were they protecting the river or were they harming the river? Jens loves rivers and he considers the Bio, Bio River to be a part of his family. He also wants to help other communities protect the rivers that they cherish, which is why he is coming in live today from a real river. And he's gonna share how we can conserve the river water where we live. Before we get into today's lessons, I would like to welcome all of our viewers out there, including our homeschool classes. So good to see you. We are thrilled to have you. And with that, let's get this Explorer Classroom started. We're gonna hand it over to Jens to share all about river ecology. Jens, take it away. Thank you, Jen. Do you hear me well? Because I'm surrounded by water and birds. So maybe the birds are very loud here. Hello, little river links. How are you doing? Hola, chiques. ¿Cómo están? Espero que bien. I hope you're doing great. I'm happy to be here. And now I will proceed to share my screen. Uh, but before that, I will just show you a bit of my surroundings. So for you to see where I am at this very moment. You see it? That's my home river. That's the Bio Bio River. I had to wade across. It was very cold. <laughs> But now I'm warm again. I had to walk some uh, minutes to come here. I'm in a, on a bank, on a sand island, surrounded by trees, bushes, birds, and other tiny creatures, just like you, even smaller. So give me one sec while I try to share my screen. Do you see this? Cool beans. So, ooh. there we go. Is it full screen now? Sure is. You got it. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. So, here we are at the Bio Bio River. You all are here with me. So, welcome to my home river. And today we're going to talk about river ecology. Um, if I speak too fast, it's because I'm very much like a river, like a torrent river. So I'm trying to speak a bit slower for, for you peeps. Um, and today's uh, topic will be rivers are alive. I won't explain you that further. I will let you understand this while I tell you stories about rivers and how they come to be rivers. So first, what we're going to talk about is I want for you firstly 
to tell me where you're based at and which is your nearest located river. So if you can tell me that, maybe uh, write down in the chat or in the YouTube channel, I would love to know where you are at this very moment. Well, I can see some kids from Mars from here. So there are some kids in Mars tuning in from. Some are from the moon, from Jupiter. Ah, some Earth kids. That's really nice. I love Earth, Earth kids. Kids from the United States. <clears throat> are there some kids from Alaska maybe there? So welcome you all here. I'm happy to see that we have kids from all the planets. And I love kids from the Earth. Those are my favorite. I'm also from the Earth. And I'm at my home river, which is the Bio Bio. And I will explain you what is a river, the river's shapes, who lives in the river here with me, my neighbors. Also, I'm a kayaker, so I must tell you why what water is important as well. And I will tell you a bit about a very special project, which is called the Home River Bio Blitz, that maybe next year you can take part in with your teachers. So let's get started. This is where I'm from. This is the very same river where I'm at this very moment, but upstream. This is the Bio Bio River, my home. This is in the Andes Mountains. These are very huge mountains that uh, collect all this water. And then this river starts very, very far away from here because I live near the ocean. And this big river is also called Putalufu in Mapudungun, the language of the Pehuenche, the local indigenous people. And the Futalofu, or the Bio Bio River, has a brother in the sky, which is the Wenu Lofu, the river of the sky. My river is sacred for the Pehuenche people, and the river of the sky, that is the brother of this river, is the Milky Way, as you can see in this picture. So I live in the Earth River, and there is a sky river that's the brother of my river, my sacred river. But what is a river? Any ideas on what is a river? Is this a river? Can you recognize this river? Okay, I see some kids there, you know, right? Just tell me which river is it, if you know. Just tell me. Just shout it. Which river is it? Colorado River, right? This is the Colorado River. Yes. This river is flowing through the Great, Great Canyon. And why is it a river? Does anybody know why is this a river? Again, can I ask uh, kids to turn their mix on or? Oh, sure. Let's see. Let's see if someone from Ms. Permalis's class, Ms. Permalis's class, do you know why this is a river? Be, uh, be, they're saying because it has water. Yeah, Anything it else? has lots of water. Narrow. That's true. Because it's narrow. It's rocky around. It's shallow. Are these are these good answers? Yeah, they're all good answers. You are masters. I don't think I need you need this class. Maybe you just need <laughs> to see me with my river, but you know what a river is, right? So yes. yes, you are right, little creatures. This is a river and not a lake because it has moving water, flowing water. That is very important, and it is fresh water. We drink water from rivers. There are large natural systems of moving water that flows because of gravity up from up the mountains to lakes or oceans. So that's basically a river. And sometimes the rivers are shallow and you can wade across like my river. I waded across to this island or sometimes they are very deep. My river is also deep but some meters there. So I just waited the more shallow part. And of course, rivers are a source of drinkable water, like I said, and they can be fast flowing rivers full of rapids or slow moving rivers like Mine River here. 
at the mouth of the river because upstream is full of white water, waterfalls and amazing landscapes. So that's a river. And here, I just wanted to show you a little example of how a river looks extended. So there's this illustration and this you can see up in the mountains where all the small streams or creeks come together. They are called tributaries and they form a big river, which is the river system. And this is also called a basin or a watershed. We all live in watersheds. Even if you don't see your river, you live near a river or a pond or a stream that are part of this system. So even the forest, for example, this uh, sand full of trees or even the forest that is here at the border of the river is part of this natural system, which is the watershed. And they are very, very important. And in this watershed, you have the headwaters. That is where the river starts, as a creek, as a, as a um, tiny, tiny stream, and they all come together. And this is fed by rainfall, the melting snow, for example, groundwater, or when you have a spring, when it bubbles up the water and it comes all together and then goes into the ocean, into the mouth. The mouth is where the river gives its water to the ocean or a lake or a type of water that is more still not moving it's it's a bigger water body and that's the whole river it's alive it's a very huge system that considers water rocks trees humans birds and i will tell you more about that soon and there is also a part of the river at the end which is called the estuary do you know this story? Do you know where this picture is from? Any ideas? If you if you read that, you can see the answer. This is the Hudson River. This is in New York. This is the story of the Hudson River and it has brackish waters. That means when salty water of the ocean and the fresh water of the river mix, you have this mix of salty fresh water. And this is very important ecosystem for life. And this is my story. So I'm 10 kilometers from this picture. This was taken by a drone. And this is the story of the river, of my river, the Bio Bio River. This is the mouth of the river entering the Pacific Ocean. Have you been at the Pacific Ocean? Yeah? Do you like it? Yeah, me too. I also am a surfer, so sometimes I go and surf big waves. No, not big waves. I'm not that good, but I surf tiny waves. <laughs> I have fun. That's the important part. So this is my own story of the Bio Bio River. Do you like rivers? Yeah? I see some river lovers here. You know who I call the river lovers? The riverlings. Those who live by the river and love rivers. Riverlings. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you a bit about the river's shapes. Of course, there are many river types and I can be very technical and boring, but I will talk to you about three. These are the straight channel river, the meandering river, and the braided river. Have you seen any of those? Have you? Cool, because now I will ask you which type of river is going to be in the picture, okay? Just to be clear, the straight river is very easy to understand. It's straight, right? Like a channel. The meandering, meandering river is like an S. It makes curves, S, S, like a snake. And the braided river is braided and has many arms, like many snakes coming together. And now I will ask you, so which type of river? Well, you are almost right. It can be meandering, but it's braided because it has many arms. You may see, yes, yes. A each of these arms is meandering. You are right in that point, but these are many arms coming together and then departing their ways. 
So it's a braided river, many arms, and then they come together and they, they separate each other again. So this is a braided river. Sometimes you have braided hair as well, right? And now we have the second river. And this, you know already the answer. Any, any ideas? Yeah, I know you know. This is a meandering river. You knew the answer. This is the Amazon River, which is also considered as a sacred snake. It has this form of a snake. And you see the difference with the braided river because this is just one big channel, just one big river that meanders like a snake. This is the Amazon River. And this here is the Tagliamento River, one of the three, the, the, the last wild rivers in Central Europe. And this is the Amazon River, and it's a meandering river. And now I want for you to tell me which river shape is this one. Thing is, it's a straight channel. And you are right. Well, this is artificial. This is not a river. I put this to, to prove you. <laughs> this, is an, this is an artificial channel. This is not a river. This was made by humans. And sadly, maybe it was a creek before and it had a nice braided form or maybe it was a uh, meandering, but humans sometimes want to control things. I don't like that and do this type of channels. This is a straight artificial channel, but I have something else for you. And that is this. This is a natural straight river. And normally, natural straight rivers are canyons. Like you can see the Blight River Canyon in South Africa. So this is one of the amazing canyons you may see if you go to South Africa, or maybe you live there. And that are the river shapes. Do you have rivers at home that look like the rivers I, tell, I showed you, uh, kids, kiddos? I imagine you have amazing rivers where you are. Which is, do somebody know which is one of the largest rivers in the United States? Any ideas? The largest watershed, the largest river. I think you know, that's the Mississippi River. Maybe some of you are from there. Okay. <laughs> No, I will go to the, almost. I'm, we are almost finishing. So I will now just explain you some stories before we go for your questions. And we are gonna talk about the non-human neighborhood, the river neighborhood, my friends. But I'm showing you here species that we won't talk about. These are hippos, they're amazing. They live in the river. Crocodiles, they're also amazing. I know some of you maybe live nearby and lions. But many of these species are in other continents and places, right? So I want for you to know the, the species where I come from, my own species, the ones I love. So I will talk to you about the torrent duck. The ducks are very important in rivers. Birds also, in general, live by the river. And this particular uh, duck lives in my river. This duck, the torrent duck, has its name because it lives in the torrent of the river, in the white water. And you may see it as the best white water. We say kayakers, don't go where the torrent duck doesn't go because they know better kayaking than you, fellow kayaker. So always be aware of the torrent duck. It's also beautiful. You know this for sure. I know you know this. Yeah, I know you know this is called the kingfisher because it's the king of the fishers. It normally poses on branches by the river. You see it with this amazing crest, this blue crest. It's like a punk singer and it swims into the water. It dives and takes the fishes out and it's fishes. It's amazing, I love it. And that's also here. I and my river. So I'm showing you the creatures which I live with, my neighbors, non-human neighbors. And maybe you have seen also the insects flying around in rivers. For example, the dragonfly. Of course, you know the dragonfly, right? You have seen one, right? The dragonfly is similar to the damselfly, but 
at the same time, they are different. The dragonfly has its wings like this. When, when it's quiet uh, on a branch or maybe on a leaf, the, leaf the, the wings of the dragonfly are straight to the sides. But the damselfly, when it's on standing on a leaf or a, or a branch, it has it like this. I cannot show you. I don't, I'm not a damselfly, but it has both wings together. And the, fly, the dragonfly like this, then still fly like this. So now you know the difference. Oh, I think I injured my arm. <laughs> no, no, no. I do yoga, kids. Yoga is good. When you come to my age, you must do yoga. I'm not that old. <laughs> and just act like old. This, you know as well. This is the river crayfish. We also have them here at the Bio Bio River. These are very important because they filter water. They eat and they eat uh, things that are floating in the river. And that's the way, the way they feed. And this is one of my best friends. This is called the caddis fly. And this is the larva of the caddis fly, which has a very interesting skill. It can bring together grain sands with silk in their in their mouth and they make their caddies. They are like their homes. You can see here different homes of them, right? And there is even an artist that has caddies flies, larvae in aquariums, in the water tanks. And he takes uh, some uh, gold grains, puts them in the water with pearls. And these caddies flies can make gold homes. Really fancy dudes, right? Fancier. And well, rivers are full of plants. This is a water, a water swamp near rivers, where I'm from, actually. This is a freshwater mangrove. We have freshwater mangroves. You can ask me later what that is. And of course, I'm surrounded by plants. You can see here some of them. Some, so these are alders, um, willows, willow trees, blackwood, and others. So I'm surrounded by them. And this is one of my favorite friends as well. This is a, you have seen this, at least pictures. Who knows what this is? This river other kids is called Weyin. And this is a particular river other that lives in Chilean rivers. It's the Weyin. Sadly, it's endangered, so we have to fight and work for the conservation of the river otter. And you also know this dude, this dude. This is a, he's so charismatic, right? Look at, look at the uh, peeps. I don't know what I'm doing this. You should be teaching me. You know way more than me. This is amazing. Outstanding. You're a master class. I'm glad to be here sharing these non-human -na non neighbors with you. And this is also sometimes in the river. I just want to show you this amazing picture of a yaguarate. It's a tiger that lives in the Amazon. It doesn't live in the river, but it's just, it's, it's a beautiful picture. I wanted to show you that if you go to Amazon, you may see this one swimming near you. The head's popping up and you, oh, damn. <laughs> and... This is one of the more beautiful river friends you may see. And is, of course, the river dolphin. Pink dolphins that are so happy in the river, jumping, swimming, and they are also in the Amazon River, which is full of these species. So I'll show you most of the species were in my river, but I wanted to show you some of the other South American species. And just one more thing, fishes are very important. Fishes are part of the food we eat, but also they are part of the river system, right? And in my, my river, we have this little tiny fish, which is called La Carmelita de Concepcion, un pez nativo acá, a very beautiful native fish. But I wanted to show you also, because I know many of you may know this fish, that there are other fishes around the world that are very important, like the Chinook salmon, which we know, maybe you know, maybe not, but this is something you should know. For many indigenous tribes in North America is sacred. So there's also 
an importance in the conservation of species, not, not only because of environment reasons, but also of cultural reasons. So the salmon is a sacred fish for many tribes in the United States. And that's the reason also we have to take care of rivers because they are the home for these species, and the home for our beliefs as well. And now, yeah, I think I took much time. <laughs> I, I had I got carried away with all this information, but I will just pass over and tell you we use rivers for many reasons, agriculture, uh, transportation, we drink its waters, but we also harm the rivers. And that's something bad. For example, dams are cutting rivers and rivers must flow free. It's very important for them. They're like our veins. Imagine somebody cut your veins, then you will, yeah, so hopefully not, but you may die and rivers can die as well if you cut them. So that's the reason dams are so bad, among other reasons. So here we are at the left kayaking and also looking at the impact of destruction of rivers. And that's sad, but yeah, my own river is also mutilated by one of these dams. <laughs> This is a huge dam that was constructed to produce energy, despite that the local people didn't want that. You may see the tiny kayaker down there. So imagine this dam is huge and that's affecting all these non-human uh, friends, the river dolphin, the river otter, also the fishes, the birds, they all are affected by this dam. This is the sad moment. So we are like, hmm. We have also problems. Not everything is party, kids. I know, I know we like to party and have fun and dance, but yeah, rivers are being threatened all around the world. That's sad. But I have to tell you why, and this is the white water part. Uh, these these rivers are also still full of life, and that has to do with rapids. So when you have rapids, you have oxygen entering the rivers and that's very important because oxygen is important for fishes and we with friends know that and we with friends are fighting for rivers and that's the reason that i invite you all kids to the home river biopits that's something we do with national geographic each year we go out and we explore rivers like i'm here i go out and I use the iNaturalist app, which is a smartphone app to take pictures of the plants, of the birds, of the fishes, to register and document who lives in the river and how we can help them. And that's something we just did two weeks ago with friends in all the rivers around the world. We were in different places. These dots are the rivers where we were. Everybody in different places, Chile, Peru, Bolivia, Argentina, Mexico, the United States, Europe, also South Africa, Rwanda, Namibia, Indonesia, India, everywhere people were going out and exploring home rivers, kids, grown-ups, and all the people coming together to fight for their rivers, to know who they live with, to protect their rivers. And people came out. You can see here kayaking, they were swimming. Many kids were out as well, coming together to understand who lives in the river with them. And that's why rivers are so important because they are our homes. They unite us. You saw all these creatures that live in the river, all the river shapes, all the different dynamics. Rivers are alive. This is a picture of me and friends doing a festival, celebrating life in rivers, fighting for rivers. We want the dams, these huge dams, these things that are blocking rivers, these obstacles to be dismantled. And we want free flowing rivers to be healthy and wild again. Sorry, I took so much time kids, but I think I got carried away. <laughs> it was cool to share with you. And now I want to hear you more on your questions. So I will now stop sharing my screen. But I will first tell you that here in Chile, we have more than 25 river festivals to celebrate rivers and fight for their protection and conservation. So you are welcome to join us, bring your kayaks and we can do some rafting together. We can go kayaking. You are welcome to visit us in the Bio Bio River. Thank you.
Jens, thank you again for such a fun, but also thoughtful presentation about your family member, the river. Thank you all kids. Greetings to Mars, the moon, and also of course to the earth kids everywhere around the world. I happy to be here. Thank you, Jen, for being an amazing host. Sorry for being taking so much time and see you at the river. So you heard it, Riverlings. You know that the river is so important and you heard from Jen's how we can protect the river. So I hope that you enjoyed today's show. I know I did. And I hope that you can join more of our events. Our next Explorer Classroom for Littles, ages four through eight, will be on October. Oh, I want to say the 17th. Oh, I haven't written the time down, but it's two weeks from today. We're going to have Explorer, Explorer Nigel Golden, and we're going to learn about Arctic habitats. You will not want to miss this event. So go ahead, register for future events at netgeoed.org backslash Explorer Classroom. You can also request a chance to be featured on screen today, like some of our classrooms. Also, educators, we have a new interactive guide that you can share with your learners every Explorer classroom. You can take them on a special interactive journey with our special guests. So I hope you will check that out, as well as the Explorer Mindset in Action Guide that is linked to the registration page. Have a great day, everyone. Stay curious and keep exploring.